Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Reggie Winston, man. Just want to check in with y'all, man. Today we're going to do a bald fade on my boy Cam. As you see, man, I'm just coming through this thing. And I just want to make sure I understand the flow of his hair. Young barbers, man, if you cut him with the grain or against the grain, you got to understand the flow of the hair. So I just come through it. And I'm going to start off with the clipper clothes. This clipper that I'm using is the Wall 1919. But I got it modified with the Wall Legend blade and the Wall Legend slide, the blade slide. What I love about that clipper, it, it gives you an extra uh, few, few millimeters on the fade zone. It opens up a little bit longer than a regular Wall clipper. Very comparable to the Andes Master, right? So yeah, I'm just get through this thing, man. I always do two passes. I'm really gonna focus in on this line that I'm putting in. Not too much stuff under it, but I will occasionally go down on the uh, side of this head and clean it up a little bit. I'm gonna work my way all the way to the front, as you can see. And I just wanna make sure my foundation is good. This is my foundation, y'all. When you build a good foundation, your house is gonna be amazing. I'm just, I'm looking at the hair. I went to the front of it just that you didn't see me. I did it off camera and I looked at them dead on to make sure the lines matched up in the front. Cause you know, one side would be higher to throw your whole fade off. So I'm just touching it and I don't want to do a drop fade. I ain't trying to make it curve and all this fancy stuff. I just want to give them a solid, beautiful ball fade. This is my second um, attempt or my second pass at making sure that line is correct. While I was in front of him, I looked at the back of his head through the mirror. In that barbershop, y'all, new barbers, the mirror is your best friend in that barbershop. It's gonna tell you the things that you need to know without being loud, all right? So, I'm gonna grab the outliner blade on my ZR. These are the Super ZRs. I really like these things. Come with a lithium ion battery. I have an outliner blade. It cuts closer than a four alt or four zero whatever you say it cuts closer than that it's not great at edging up but it's really good at balding and i know some people have balding clippers uh, i don't want to i don't want to take up extra room on my station i can get this balding blade or the outliner blade and do the same thing a balding clipper would do and also have other blades metal blades for my haircuts so yeah, I'm, I'm getting close to the line that I already created with the clipper clothes, but not going all the way to it. I'm just trying to stay a little bit below that so I can easily get this blend out. If I would've did the trimmer clothes, it would've been a much harder job getting this blend out. And I don't want to make his head hurt. Have you ever had somebody do a ball fade on you with a trimmer and that thing just felt like they scalped you? Yeah, I don't want that for my client. I don't like my clients hurting. So here I'm going on top of this head with the one guard open. Now I usually would go to, after that last step, I would usually go to the clipper open with no guard on the side and go ahead and do that bottom fade transition out. But I want to go ahead and jump right into the top and, and establish what my lowest desired length on top of this fade is. And we're going to fade down. Think about this. Would you rather go down 100 flights of stairs or go up 100 flights? That's what I'm saying. It's easier to fade down. And once you get a good barber eye, you will be able to see what you need to cut. And I know that's one of the hard things for new barbers, even some established barbers, is when they're fading down, knowing what they cut. But once you get these systems and these things in place, you will come up with more consistent haircuts. So on the side, I'm gonna do clipper clothes with the grain on top it was one guard open again uh, with the grain on the side i'm gonna do one guard close with the grain there's no need to do open on the sides when i need to fade it into the ball right it's just like let's be efficient y'all we gotta be efficient this world area gave me a little bit of a problem but i'm gonna work it out i'm gonna take my time and do it right I don't want to make a plug in it so it's easier to take your time. And you see that comb, right? I have to tell new barbers all the time, get a rhythm, cut comb, cut comb. Or you can brush and blend, all right? It doesn't matter what side you on, cutting, comb, and brushing and blending. We all family, all right? Cool. You see me cutting and comb and cutting and comb. I'm combing and cutting with the grain. And that's what you have to do. You have to understand the flow of the hair. 
before you cut it. I'm really going in smoothing this thing and just making sure it's legit, y'all. Getting that ridge and really making sure this haircut is laid down. I will be shampooing it. You see me flip that thing around. I'm tapering the hairline down because I hate seeing a lip on my hairline and my customer's hairline. This clipper open and I did that taper. Started to taper on the hairline with a clipper open. I'm gonna go around the head with this clipper open, all right? Up to the parietal ridge and see stroke that thing on out, y'all. I'm gonna do two passes and you still see me cutting and combing. Brushing and blending, whatever you doing, cutting and combing. Getting that thing married in there. I could have went with a one and a half first, but I already knew what what I should do. I want to be efficient here. I don't have anybody behind cam, so I can really make this blend nice. But I did that one open, and I did two passes on that thing. And as you can see, it's already kind of marrying the side to the top. Our top, this is a fade again, y'all. We're cutting and we're going down. This is the clipper closed. I reduced the travel. Travel is from bottom up, and my pass is side to side. So I reduced the travel, but I continue to do my pass, and it was going to be two passes. We'll speed it up a little bit just so you know we can get through this thing. But that's my first pass. I'm gonna come back with a clipper close around the head again to complete my second pass. I always do two passes on this haircut. I just wanted the plane to look beautiful, so I really took my time and kind of went back on some areas. But that's the, about to be the completion of my second pass. All right, I'm gonna grab a half guard and I'm gonna close the half guard. The half guard close is a good guard between one guard closed and no guard open. As you see, I reduced my travel again. I'm not going far up on the head, but I'm still going through that, that line I created with the clipper closed. Cutting and combing. Don't forget to cut and comb or brush and blend, all right? So half guard closed, reduce my travel, still gonna do two passes. You might see me go up a little bit higher. When I go up a little bit higher, I'm not putting the full blade on. I'm not putting a lot of pressure either. When I go a little higher, I'm doing more of a two teeth. And when I'm two teething, I'm creating W's because all we do is win. Remember these things. I'm giving you the lingo for you to go back into the barbershop or cut your son hair or whatever you got to do. I'm giving you the lingo for you to remember. Create W's when you two teeth. Right now, we're not putting a lot of pressure, but we're cutting and combing and we're getting this fade in there. You can see this thing is already almost complete. Ain't that crazy, it's quick. And that's what I want you to do, be more efficient. No guard, clipper open. I'm gonna do this one section. I'm not gonna do an entire pass because I want you to really see. So this clipper open, I'm gonna do two passes just on this section. As I go up, I kind of angle it from full blade to just a couple of teeth. I just want to get this blade in, this is fade in there with this blade. I close it down some about halfway. I'm going to reduce the travel, all right? Still going through the initial line that I put in there. You see that thing is coming out already. I put it in, I put that line in with a clipper close. I can get it out with a clipper close. So we got down to the clipper close. We're just working through that line, light pressure. You don't see his head moving. All you see is the skin moving because I'm actually creating some friction with the clipper. You don't want to be busting him in the head. Let your clippers cut. It ain't your pressure, y'all. I'm, so, I'm tired of seeing customers get the head beat up. Anyway, we opening and closing. We just trying to make this thing right. And we trying to get the favor. Let's get around to the back of this thing. So yeah, we, we're really getting it in there. And I'm gonna do the back section. I usually go all the way around, but for the sake of the video, I wanted to work in sections down this part. But this is a crucial part. This is where your blend really comes together. This is when you're marrying the top to the bottom, all right? Opening, I started open, I went halfway, now it's closed. And I can just see little spots in it. I can just go ahead and touch up with this clipper open. And you see, I'm putting more pressure on the right side of the blade. I'm creating W's while two teeth, I'm notching with my blade. Creating W's because what? All we do is win. Let me see you put that down in the comments. All we do is win, y'all. A fade is nothing but scattered lines. As you see, man, I just, what I did on the right side and the back, I'm doing on the left side. I know where my zones were because I know where my travel were. I know how far I travel with each guard. 
and, and coming down from a one with the grain is it's not a lot of guards. I went from open on the side, halfway, this halfway right now, then I'm gonna close that thing down and get that bottom line out. Don't it look beautiful on this side? Yeah, let's get back to the other side. So you see this thing is really getting in there, right? That fade is looking already good. I can go to the shampoo bowl right now, but I'm gonna go to continue to work on it. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not in no rush. Cam came to get this amazing haircut for a promotion. He had to look good for his his uh his his job. Cam is an amazing police officer out of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. I love this guy, man. He does a, a lot of great stuff in the community. But you see, I'm getting that thing in there. I'm notching, creating W's because what? All we do is win. I see some stuff in this haircut. I want to go ahead and touch up. I put that one guard back on. And I just want to get some of these uh, dark areas. When you're looking at a fade, you got to think of your fade as a sugar cookie, right? Sugar cookie has no imperfections. But when you see those chocolate chips in that sugar cookie, you got to go back in there and get just those chocolate chips. You don't do the whole fade over. Get the dark areas, all right? So that's what we're doing right now, man. I'm really making sure that the top and the ridge are married. Um, open. I'm going from open to close. I got to really work that world area. As you see, man, it's kind of crazy and he's got the waves. You really want these things to blend perfectly. Young barbers, I'm telling you, you got this. Just pay attention to the technique and not the tool, all right? If you get the, the basics, you will get the better. So get the basics first. I'm cutting and combing. Do you see that, that comb work? I'm cutting and combing. I'm going with the grain again, just trying to get that the world area down to a smooth nice transition into that fade and um just doing what i gotta do to make sure my boy cam is looking 100 percent amazing giving him confidence I, I don't just cut hair man I, I give confidence and that's what we're doing here man we're going all the way around this haircut i put the half bar back on to get some of that out again and i don't have to do the whole haircut y'all we're getting the chocolate chips up out of our sugar cookie all right <laughs> I hope y'all like these analogies, man. And one thing I want you to make sure you pay attention to is me stepping back, looking at the haircut. I step back behind him and I will go in front of him to see what this haircut looked like. And I use my mirror, which is my best friend in the barbershop because the mirror would not put you on blast. It'll let you know what you need to work on and touch without embarrassing you, all right? So that's that half guard still there. Just really make sure that blend look good, man. You see that thing, man. So next thing up, man, Cam got to get this beard taken off. And Cam is really sensitive to uh, straight razors and shavers. And he's been growing this beard for some time. And I could have went in with the trimmer. But I wanted to create less um, irritation as possible. So I did a clipper close first. And sometimes the trimmers can pull, mine don't, but I just wanna make sure that I get this down easily without pulling at the skin or, you know, whatever. I'm always, I'm definitely gonna follow this up with a trimmer. But you see that left hand, Barbers? You see what that left finger doing? It's just kind of moving stuff out of the way and it's creating contact with them. Always make sure you create contact with your customer, your client, whoever's in your chair create that contact establish that contact keep the contact i went over to the side i'm gonna leave his mustache i'm gonna repeat the same thing on the other side once again this is clipper clothes and i did it because cam has been growing his beard out and he uh can become easily irritated with uh shaving or uh or electric shavers so yep you see me i'm still creating contact pull the hair out. I gotta cut that flavor saver off right in there yeah there you go buy flavor saver and I'm gonna go ahead and start the process of trimming up this beard on the sides I want to make sure those are even I did it right at the corner of his lips now I'm got my sh my trimmers and you see my left hand I'm actually pulling the skin with that finger a little bit making that skin taut so I can create less drag as I use the shaver against the grain on the beard I can't use a electric, uh, not shaver, but the trimmer. I cannot use electric shaver. I can't use a straight razor. Cam skin is not going to allow me to do that. So I got to get it close as possible with the trimmer. 
And these trimmers are zero gap. You see that green tag. Shout out to my boy Daryl Thompson out there at Scissor Clinic in LA. He take care of all my tools. I love what it what he you know get my tools uh, zero gap and like running at a thousand percent. Cleaning this thing on up, man. Taking my time. I want to be a fish. I don't want to have to go back and do this. So if I do it right the first time, I won't leave myself work. And I'm just, you know, doing it like I would cut grass. Doing multiple passes and cutting over, you know, overlapping with my cutting. Got this thing in there. You can see that fade already in there. And yeah, let's go ahead and touch this mustache up real quick, man. I like to do the lip of the mustache first because if I make an error on that part, I can correct it on top of the mustache. If I did the top of the mustache first, I box myself in the young barbers, new barbers, old barbers, establish the bottom of the mustache first, and then you can always go on top and make your corrections. Do not box yourself in. Getting that mustache tight for my boy both sides making sure they match what you're not seeing is that i'm standing directly in front of him when i do it or i walk by him i'm looking it's easier to make a jump shot when you square it up it's harder when you're doing a fadeaway all right so barber stop leaning looking at your your edge ups square straight up with that that bar that, that client man and look directly at their hairline all right another thing is when you're doing the hairline spin them to the mirror so you can see what they see these are major keys that I'm giving you. I hope you picking up what I'm putting down. If you uh, don't follow the channel, man, go ahead and consider subscribing, man. This is what I like to do. I like to see other barbers get better, man. Because if all of us get better, man, we make a bigger impact. And when we make bigger impacts, man, we make more money, all right? Man, I just seen like something that thing and I just had to touch it one more time. So what you didn't see is I took him to the shampoo bowl, shampooed his hair, and now brought him back. I put some spritz on the line. I put some oil in his scalp and I blow dried it and I laid everything down. Right now, um, I'm pinching and pulling. Pinching means you put the trimmer where the line need to be. You press down lightly and you pull down. Pinch and pull. Do not push up on hairlines. Pinch and pull. If you need to create a hair, if you need to draw on the hairline with a pencil first to really establish, especially if it's a new customer, you don't really know where they like the line, do that. I know Cam, I know where he like his stuff at. So I pinched and pulled on the hairline. Let me know what you think about this uh, camera too, man. This GoPro on my chest. I apologize, I, would, I thought I had it a little bit higher, but I'm, I'm learning man like i hope you enjoy it but as you see i'm pinching and pulling on the side i started in the middle of his forehead worked my way to one corner and i went from that corner down to his eyebrow pinching and pulling and you also got to comb and brush like you got to brush and comb the hair forward to lay over the hairline and tap it again all right I just walked around, you see me, I, I squared up with him, I look dead in the mirror, I get to see what he see. Cause when customers get in the car, the first thing they do is check out their haircut and they looking at their hairline in the mirror. So let your best friend in the mirror tell you exactly what you need to do. I started again in the middle, I went to the corner, pinching and pulling. And now I'm doing the side. I call these chair legs. I'm so sick and tired of seeing barbers. Um, not showing their front of their edge up. When they do show it, a lot of times it's not even. I call top line to top line, the side line to chair legs. Would you sit in a chair where the legs are doing completely different things? I'm squaring them up again. I'm shooting my jump shot. I got them dead center, squared up. My shoulders with his shoulders looking in the mirror. I tilted his head down, I'm pinching and pulling. I get to see what my issue is. Not only did I look at it from behind them, I'm looking at it directly in front of them too. You might see different things, so it's best to take your time on this and get it perfect, all right? You see that? Yep, awesome. I see something on that chair leg over there. I wanna tap that line. I don't have to push it back because guess what? 
and it and it doesn't have to be stupid sharp because i'm using a razor to make sure his hairline is sharp i'm checking it out pinching and pulling just really tapping that line i'm standing behind it again tilt his head down a little bit i get to see exactly what he see y'all he's already pleased with that edge up he know that thing is going to be even and he know that i'm not trying to hide the mirror from him he get to see his haircut by the time i'm done he gonna tell you this thing is perfect again you see me checking it out i cross check so much so I, I know back in the day man like in woodworking class you said they say measure twice cut once and hair cutting, just keep cross checking, keep cross checking, keep cross checking. If it ain't looking great, keep working on it. All right, be light though. Right now, I'm just skimming the top with my trimmer since I already had that tool in my hand. Any flowers, anything popping up, I can cut it down with my trimmers. I apologize for skimming away, but hey, you see it now. Camera angles right. I'm just skimming everything on top. I haven't put any. Uh, anything to uh, keep this waves laid down. All I did was replenish the scalp with some oil and I put spritz on the line. I'm gonna use this pencil. Now this was one of those tricky things that I heard, had to learn how to do. And I think I've mastered it at this point. I lay the pencil down on the side and I don't press too hard and create a, a hard line. It's gonna be difficult for my trimmers or my razor to get out. When I'm done with this haircut, you shouldn't see the line of the pencil. You shouldn't see I put a heavy pencil on. I hate seeing these haircuts with heavy pencil lines on it. Like, that's not what they came for, yo. They came to get a beautiful haircut, not a pencil line edge up. But I do this just to really make sure this edge up pop. Not only does it create an illusion where the hairline or the hair looks stronger, it also helps dry up any oils on that, on that forehead. So you see I got the angle, man. I'm still using the side of the pencil, not directly pointing. I'm also creating contact with my pinky or my, my ring finger as I do it. And I got contact with my left hand. Peek the techniques, y'all, not the tool. It's always the technique. Get the basics before you get the better. You see that pinky was on that forehead when I did that mark. Same again. All right, cool. Let's get to this break. Now I'm using some OG Walker. Uh, black i love the way this color look it's not super black it's more of a brown black i like this one better than his brown black not only do you spray the line but you spray behind the line um again i'm sick of seeing people use enhancements and and it doesn't look good and it gives us who like to use enhancements and make these picture perfect cuts it gives us a bad name so not only do i spray the line but i spray behind the line as well and I'm not trying to cover up mistakes. As you see, the fade is in there. I'm just trying to make this thing look amazing cause Cam had a date that night and he was going for a new promotion the next day. So I wanted this man to feel like I'm a million bucks. So I sprayed the line with the card. The card is gonna help create a flat area. It's, the card is perfectly flat. So after you spray the uh, spray enhancement in like that, you gotta brush it in. I'm gonna keep brushing this hair. I'm gonna keep brushing. I'm gonna keep brushing because I need to move the color and make it blend into that fade. As you see, I only sprayed in the hair area. I didn't spray it on the skin fade part of his hair. I did it in the hair and I'm moving it and brushing this and blending this thing into this fade. And it's looking amazing already. Now this ash line, I hate it. So I grab my, my razor and my favorite razor I use on on canvas the shape you blaze i think that's how you pronounce it shape you or whatever those blades are amazing i used to not think it was any difference into blade and blaze until i tried those those things are amazing do you see the ash line anymore on that line no you don't and that's what you're supposed to that's how it's supposed to look you're not supposed to see a strong ash line and have my boy looking weird when he leave the barber shop I'm gonna keep tapping and just making sure it's perfect. There's no rush. Take your time. It's a razor, y'all. You don't want to be cutting people. I'm looking in the mirror. I'm, uh, you see, I'm square up with them again. I walk my around them just to check it out. I'm looking. I'm paying attention to it. I'm gonna put this towel on so I can get his head laid back. And I'm gonna hit this top line. My chair legs are in there. They're looking amazing. I'm not putting any C's. The C's is the this part of the hairline that do a C under the um 
chair legs to the ear. No C's on this thing. This is a ball fade, no C's. I love that haircut. But I'm tapping this line, man, with this, this razor. I had the pencil on it and I'm tapping it with the razor. Like I said, I didn't have to make it stupid sharp with my tremors when I know I'm gonna follow it up with a razor. Less irritation, y'all. More comfortable clients. You get better paying clients. You get more loyal clients when you do the haircut right and then don't have to hurt them. I'm tapping this, anything that might be sticking over, I'm gonna tap that one more time with my tremors. You don't have to, I like to do it. This is just me being like perfectionist, trying to give him the best cut. Let's lift this thing going up, y'all. Look at that thing, man. That thing looks amazing. I'm checking it out. I'm talking to him, looking directly in front of him. So I get to see exactly what my lines look like. I get to see if my fade's looking even on each side. I get to ensure that I didn't overspray with the, the uh, dang on enhancements. It's looking amazing. Yeah, I'm squaring up, tilt the head down a little bit. Some people's head get a little flat when you do that. Hell, man, like... I can put a great lineup, as you can see, on Cam. I'm not gonna finish that with Enhancer, man. This is a little cool little pencil tool that I use. Pacino's got one, but I didn't spend the 20 bucks on Pacino's. They make these for eyelashes, eyebrows. This is actually an eyebrow pencil. And what I did is, this was my first time using it. It's more black, and it was a little bit more black than I preferred, but it has four four points on this pen where when you draw it, it looks like hair. So I'm drawing it into Cam's hairline from the hairline and I'm going back into the hair. And I take the brush and I blend it in so this hairline looks really nice and sharp, all right? After I blend it in, I brush the hair back down. Get the techniques before you get the tools, all right? Learn the techniques and you already got the tools. You don't need to keep buying clippers and all these other things. Get the techniques. As you see, you see how dark that is? I'm not a big fan, so I have to brush it in with my comb. I'm, I got contact with my left hand. I had my right hand on his head as well as I used that marker. And I'm gonna take the brush again. I'm gonna brush it back into the hair. You see how that look? It look way more natural, you know what I'm saying? And the hairline is looking real strong. Real, real strong. If, hey, if you're getting any value out of this, yo, go ahead hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed. Not only did I do the top line, I'm doing the side line as well. Because if I'm going to use a hand, so you got to do it all the way. You got to do it right. As you see, I'm still brushing that thing. And shout out to S-Girl for making a great brush. That's a medium brush. It's not too hard, not too soft. I'm going to continue. Man, this is my first time using this pencil on cam. I just really, this pen, excuse me. And I want to make sure it's blended well. I use a little Topic fiber here. So I use Topic in another one with actual real hair. Um, Topic is just not real hair. So I use a little mixture. And I want to mute down the shine of the hair. I want it to look more natural. That's why I use this. I don't have to use it all over the head, but I'm using it closer to the line. And I just want to make the edge up look more natural. All right, I don't want to look like paint on his head. I want it to look like his real hair and it's real strong step back look at it was a little bit more up there and i'm gonna follow this up with some got to be glue holding spray because i don't want these fibers to go anywhere the the sticky part was some of that stuff i sprayed on like the og walker uh, black color but the holding spray just locks that thing on in there you see that fade uh, like my goodness that thing looks amazing tap that line again man like I seen a little stuff that just wasn't perfect and I want Cam to be perfect. Like I said, I was in no rush. The hair color looked amazing already. I could have got him out of there. But for you, for YouTube, for Cam, I want to make this thing look as amazing as possible. So I just retapped it with that, that razor. Cam said he's happy. He's feeling real confident. That's what you gotta sell, y'all. Don't just sell haircuts, man. Sell confidence, man. You see that smile on my boy? He like he about to get some trouble. I put some good product in there. You gotta emulsify. This is uh, some sweet Jamila. It gets really shiny. If you want that ditty shine on your hair and your hair to look and feel and smell healthy, this is what you need to get. Sweet Jamila by Exotics. Another product I like to use is less expensive, but just as good as that S Curl. S Curl has a really good beer balm. I like to put the beer balm in the hair. Yes, I put it in the hair. Essential oils and beeswax for the whole. You see how this technique, uh, I'm telling you, get the technique before you get the tools. 
rub that thing in there. Make it a nice little quick little head massage, man. You know, you'll be surprised how many guys don't get that at home from the old lady. So they'll appreciate it, man. Put that in there and you brush it one more time and he's going to be a winner, y'all. I'm going to put some pictures up of this haircut so you can see it. But thank you, man. This is Rachel Winston. Thank you for watching this video. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. I want to bring you more content. I want to make you a better barber. I want your barber that you go to a better barber. Share this video. If you have any questions, please drop some comments below. Appreciate y'all. And yeah, go follow me on IG, Reggie underscore Winston. And follow my barbershop, the barbershop NC. Peace.